Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. Today we're going to take a look at our most advanced Shop Saber CNC router, the new ISM series. Our customers ask us to take them to the next level of CNC technology. Our response at ShopSaber was the development of the ISM series. Let me show you the future of CNC technology. The first thing you notice is the frame is significantly heavier because it has to handle the increased loads that happen when you cut faster. But there's a, another concept, I call it quickness, and here's what that is. Basically the tool and material dictate the feeds and speeds. So we're always trying to target a certain chip thickness and a certain RPM, so we really can't change that. But I can take a program and run it on three different machines and get three different times. The difference is called quickness. Think of it this way, it's how fast the tool gets in and out of the geometry. That's the difference. And in order to get to the level we've got to, it takes a really significant machine control, and that's why we selected the Mitsubishi M80. There's an interesting story that goes along with how we ended up with this control solution. We knew we had to have a full-blown machine control to ever get to the processing speeds that we had to have. So for us, we basically looked at everything on the market and we narrowed it down to two brands and of course Mitsubishi ended up winning. But we brought each of those brands in with their people and actually set those controls up on our machine frames and did test cuts because we wanted to see the performance firsthand. And frankly, Mitsubishi won out and it wasn't even close. And that's not surprising because they advertise that control as the world's fastest machine control. And you say, well, how in the world did they do it? Well, it's all about data handling. So think about what you've got in the control. You've got some different parts of the control and they're connected. They're all connected with fiber optic. So the transfer of that data in there is, is lightning speed. Then you go back out to the machine itself and you have the servos and they have million count encoders per revolution. So that's how much data is being output out of there. Now, when you start thinking about machining, what happens on a machine frame when you get to a certain load level, harmonics can start forming. And either that limits your feed rate or you have to be able to compensate for it. The Mitsubishi control is so fast, it can anticipate that and make corrections so that those harmonic effects never affect the edge finish. That's why the Mitsubishi M80 is so good and that's why it won. Historically, machine control interfaces have a reputation for being somewhat difficult to, to use and we were really concerned about that because uh, in our other CNC products we've developed a machine interface that's really simple to use. So that means you don't have to have an engineer to operate it. A normal operator can learn how to use it and be successful real quickly. So we spent more time developing that interface for the Mitsubishi control than probably the rest of the project. You know, a lot of our competitors will just buy control and stick on there and use the interface. That's not good enough for us because our operators <laughs> really like that interface. And the beauty of it is if you prefer the traditional machine interface, it's there. You can, you can use that also.
Now, to, to go with that, we used a, an actual intuitive touch screen. It's 15 inches, so it's plenty big. And we've also used a machine operation panel and a keyboard. And we also added a neat feature I really like, and that's called MPG Manual Pulse Generation that lets you actually m move the machine in any axis very incrementally. So it turned out with a beautiful machine control interface. There's one other area that we were concerned about on CNC controllers, and that's how you get data in and out. Some controllers make it really difficult. You have to jump through hoops to do it. That's not the case with us. First off, you can plug your laptop directly into the machine control if you want to. In fact, we actually put a little shelf on there for the, your laptop to sit on if you want. You can also use a USB drive if you prefer. There's also two SD card slots, or you can actually just plug the machine control directly into your network and transfer data that way. So we tried to make it really easy for the machine operator to be successful. You may have noticed the carousel tool changer. We did that for a couple reasons. Primarily, we wanted to change the workflow possibilities on the machine. Now, that means you could feed material from the back or the front if you want to. It also means at a later date, you might want to put load and unload tables on. And there's another concept of actually passing a large board through and machining the top of it. But one of the things that's common knowledge in the machine tool industries is Tool changers are the number one source of service problems, and it really happens in a couple areas. One, sometimes there's a position required, so they have to slide it in and out, and it gets stuck. All right, that's one place. Another place has to do with how it rotates, and it's not uncommon to have some mechanical device that rotates it. So the way we dealt with that is, first in our design, it does not require a slide. Everything's positioned correctly with the gantry so that there's no slide required, so that eliminated that problem. Now, in terms of the positioning problem, we use the same technology we use for moving the machine. We put a Mitsubishi closed loop glass encoded servo to actually direct drive that tool changer so the machine control constantly knows exactly where it's at. Now, that has a couple other features too. It's extremely powerful, so it spins. So it, it really spins quickly and it can go in either direction, so the control goes the closest direction to the tool. What that amounts to is really, really, really fast chip to chip machining times. Our first demonstration was designed to illustrate the concept of quickness, and we got to watch the machine negotiate really tight geometry. For our next demonstration, let's do something in panel processing. In fact, I've got a closet, and closets by nature have lots of holes, so this is a great time to actually show the multi-drill feature. Now, at the same time, we'll also be able to watch different tool changes, so you can see the chip-to-chip -chip time that's involved in this that we talked about earlier. Now, let's go see this in action.
ShopSaber's development of the ISM series is truly going to be a game changer for the industry. If you'd like to have more information, contact us at ShopSaber.com. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.